Our recent conference, billed as Welcoming Our Brothers and Sisters with Same-Sex Attraction, met in mid-August and was attended by 400 members of the Catholic clergy and the laity. Detroit's Archbishop Alan Vineron was one of the attendees, and he was the celebrant at the Mass, which closed out the event. One of the quotes from the Mass is telling about how the title of the conference may have been a misnomer. Said Vineron, It's not being a bigot to say that people should not have sexual relations with people of the same gender. The event also featured a lecture by Dr. Timothy Flanagan entitled HIV and Other Health Risks Associated with Men Who Have Sex with Men. In that lecture, Flanagan is quoted as saying, Male sex, anal sex, facilitates the spread of all sorts of diseases. In other words, welcome gay people, you sexually disgust us, and even though heterosexual, anal sex, and other forms of copulation can also spread disease, we just want to focus on how icky gay sex is. But again, welcome. According to the fourth chapter of the biblical book of Matthew, Christ went in the desert for forty days and nights of fasting, where the devil tempted him to turn rocks into bread that he may be fed. In mid-August of this year, a self-styled messiah from Zimbabwe named Kulu Reinfurst Manuka attempted to emulate this feat by leaving his home and subjecting himself to the same harsh elements and lack of nourishment which the Bible claims Christ endured. His goal was apparently to be the first to tie Christ's record, although a brief internet search would have informed him that in 1907, a German who taught healthful fasting named Arnold Eret had already gone 49 consecutive days without sustenance while in a clear enclosure under constant supervision. Still, 40 days would have been impressive. However, after only a month, a stranger walking through the desert came upon the 73-year-old Manuka's emaciated corpse. Officially, Manuka's death has been attributed to starvation. In the wake of two recent noteworthy stories, the liberal movement's effort to expose the Confederate battle flag as an emblem of racism, and the conservative movement to expose Planned Parenthood as a for-profit abortion mill which accepts government monies while selling fetal tissue on the black market, a group of black evangelical preachers has moved to have portraits of Planned Parenthood's founder removed from the Smithsonian's portrait gallery based on claims that she was a racist who supported eugenics. Bishop E. W. Jackson is the president of Ministers Taking a Stand, who penned a letter to the National Portrait Gallery's director, Kim Sajay, writing, like Hitler, Sanger advocated eugenics, the extermination of people she deemed undesirables. Finding that the American people rejected that idea, she then switched to birth control as a way of controlling the population growth of black people and others. However, much like the reports that Planned Parenthood is selling fetal tissue, these claims appear to also be spurious to some degree. While Sanger was a proponent of eugenics, a philosophy which has since been found to be scientifically and ethically flawed, her support was not based in reasons of racial purification, and her support of eugenics did not precede her support of birth control. She was also a strong supporter of and collaborated with black doctors and involved Planned Parenthood in other beneficial interracial projects. Oh.